This example is an investment problem. Please pause the video and take a moment to read the problem. Okay, here it says Wealth Mutual Funds would like to invest $100,000 among these five investment opportunities. Now, what is the goal? The goal is to maximize the projected return from the $100,000. Now, what do we mean by return? Well, the additional money you get out of the investment after subtracting the cost or the principal. Here we are given the projected rates of return for these five investment opportunities. Keep in mind, these values are just forecasts based on some historical data and maybe uh, some analyst outlook, but we don't know what the actual returns will be. That's why you don't want to put all the money into the place with the highest rate of return, like Pacific Oil. For Pacific Oil, it says the projected rate of return is 10.3%, but there is no guarantee you will get that. It might, who knows, it might even yield a negative rate of return. In general, the potential for high return tends to be accompanied by high risk. So you want to also put some money into low return but low risk places as well, like the government bonds. You can see that the government bonds here has the lowest rate of return out of the five, but it is the safest place to put your money. Basically, you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket. You want to diversify. To ensure this, we are given some guidelines to follow. The first guideline says, neither industry, oil or steel should receive more than $50,000 of the total investment. So you don't want to put too much money into any one industry. The second guideline forces us to put at least some money into government bonds. The way we ensure this is to tie the amount of government bonds to the amount that goes into the steel industry. So if you put, let's say, $10,000 into the steel industry, then you're forced to put at least $2,500 into the government bonds. The third guideline limits the amount that goes into the Pacific Oil Company. Now, Pacific Oil has the highest rate of return, but is high risk. So we want to limit the money that goes in there, so it cannot be more than 60% of the total oil industry investment. Now, what do we mean by oil industry? Well, we got here two oil companies, so there's our oil industry. And then we have a steel industry here, represented by two steel companies. I think now we're ready to formulate the linear programming model. First, the decision variables. What do we need to decide on? Oh, here it is. The amounts that should be invested in the five investment options. So it looks like we're going to need five decision variables. I made a space for them here. And let's see, how about we use the first letters? So we're going to say, let A be the dollar amount that should be invested in Atlantic oil. Then we have P, M, H, G with a similar you know, definitions. So decision variables was the first step. Now we go on to the objective function. We want to maximize the projected return from the investments, so it's we want to maximize the projected return. Uh, now what is the projected return? That's the total return from the investments, so that will be the sum of the returns from the five investments. So we would need to find the return for each investment and then add them all up. Let's look at the first one, return from the Atlantic oil. Well, the projected rate of return is 7.3%, so you know it's got to be 7.3% of the principal. Let's say, for instance, if you put, let's say, $100 into Atlantic oil. How much return would you expect to get? You say $7.30. Well, how did you get that? You got it from taking 7.3% of the $100, which means multiplying 0.073 by $100, right? The decision variable A is a principle. So the return from Atlantic Oil is 
7.3% of A or 0.0 or 0.073 times A. In a similar way, the return from the second one, Pacific Oil, is 0 0.103 times P, the amount invested, and so forth. So we need to take each rate of return, move the decimal point two places to the left, and multiply by the corresponding variable. I think we're ready to write down the objective function. So we want to maximize projected return, uh, which is, the first term is 0 0.073 times A, second term 0 0.103 times P, plus 0 0.064 times M, plus 0 0.075 times H, plus 0 0.045 times G. So there is our objective function. It's very important, so let's highlight it. There we go. Now let's talk about the constraints. Now as you know, these three guidelines will turn into constraints. But before we look at these, we should also have a constraint that addresses uh, how much money we have to invest. That is, the total amount invested should be $100,000. So we want to have a constraint that says total amount invested is equal to $100,000. What is the total amount invested? Well, it must be the sum of the five investment amounts. So it must be just the sum of all the variables. So it would be A plus P plus M plus H plus G is equal to $100,000. Now we could take a look at the guidelines. Now let's look at the first one. It says neither industry should receive more than $50,000 of the total investment. That means there's a limit on the oil industry and a limit on the steel industry. So that actually gives us two constraints. So let's write that down. Amount that goes into the oil industry should be no more than $50,000. Also, the amount that goes into the steel industry should be no more than $50,000. Now, what is the amount in the oil industry? Well, there were two oil companies. So here, that's amount in Atlantic Oil plus the amount in the Pacific Oil. And similarly, the amount in the steel industry should be the sum of the amounts that go into these two steel companies. So these two together would be the steel industry. So that gives us A plus P for oil industry and M plus H for the amount that goes into the steel industry. So this part is A plus P and the steel industry. So well, that's M plus H. No more than is less than or equal to and then 50,000 and uh, steel industry less than or equal to 50,000. So we got these two constraints from the first. So we got these two constraints from the first condition. Now the second guideline says the amount invested in the government bonds should be at least 25% of the amount in the steel industry. That is, amount invested in government bonds should be at least 25% of the amount that goes into the steel industry. Now translating this into a constraint, among the government bonds, so that part is just G, at least must be greater than or equal to 25% of the amount in the steel, so that would be amount in the steel industry is M plus H, and 25% is 0.25 times. So there is our constraint, g greater than or equal to 0.25 times, parentheses, m plus h. Now you might think you're done writing this constraint, but no, we, we actually need to rewrite the constraint in a standard format. What do we mean by standard format? That means it should look something like this. 
you gotta have a you know, number times a variable plus or minus a number times variable and so forth on the left hand side of the constraint and then in the middle you have something like this greater equal to less than equal to equal to that kind of thing and, and on the right hand side you should just have a single value a number a number no variables no variables on the right hand side now this expression is not in a standard format on the right hand side you see this expression that has the variables so we need to get rid of this from the right hand side we could do this by subtracting the entire expression on the right hand side from both sides that, so that is it's kind of like we're moving all this stuff to the left hand side so we subtract the stuff on the right hand side from both sides and that gives us g minus 0.25 times n plus h on the left hand side grain equal 2 and on the right hand side what do we have? If we subtract the entire expression from itself well there's nothing left so we have 0 and 0 is a number so that's fine but wait there's more we got parentheses here and that's not a proper format we need to take things out of the parentheses using the distribute properties so we gotta take it's gotta be g and then minus 0.25m and then minus 0.25h so it's going to be like this and equal to zero so now this is fine you got variable you know one times g minus 0.25m minus 0.25h so so this is a proper expression for our constraint we're done with the second guideline let's go to the third one it says the investment in Pacific oil cannot be more than 60 percent of the total oil industry investment so this is to keep the lid on the Pacific oil investment so we need amount in the Pacific oil no more than 60 percent of the oil industry investment so translating all this amount in Pacific oil that's P no more than is less than or equal to 60% of means 0.60 times and the oil industry amount well there were two oil companies we add them up A plus P notice that this expression also needs to be rewritten like in the previous constraint as so as before we could subtract the entire right hand side from both sides that gives us P minus 0.60 A plus P less than or equal to well nothing now we could take out variables from the parentheses it's going to be p minus 0.6a minus 0.6p so that gives us p minus 0.6a minus 0.6p less than or equal to zero but there's one more thing because we have two terms that have p so we need to combine them and notice that this is 1p and here's minus 0.6p so it's 1 minus 0.6 is 0.4 so the coefficient for p becomes 0.4 so 0.4p so this one and this one together and then the remaining term is minus 0.6a and that is less than or equal to 0 of course we also need to have a non-negativity constraint that says a p m h g now everybody should be equal equal to zero now this is a little disorganized so we're going to collect everything together and uh, put them in a one place and write the linear programming model uh, in one place so to do that we're going to collect the constraints there is um, a plus p less than or equal to 50,000 Oh, and then here is the first one. Then n plus h. Then we have, oh, okay, here. And the Pacific oil constraint, it was here. And here is a non negativity. So, how about we put them all together in this 
place right here we have space. Now we write the linear programming model in its entirety. Here is the objective function that I just moved over. Then we'll say subject to and then write down the constraints. The first constraint is right here. I'm just going to copy that down. A plus P plus M plus H plus G is equal to $100,000. Second constraint from here, A plus P is less than equal to $50,000. The third one, and it comes from here, M plus H is less than or equal to $50,000. What I'm doing is I'm lining up the variables. Having all the variables lined up like this will make it easier when we go to Excel because in Excel, each variable gets its own column. Okay, number four from here, it's G. Oh, G is the last term then minus 0.25m, so that's over here, minus 0.25m, then minus 0.25h, and then plus g, since this coefficient for g is just a positive one, and that is greater than or equal to zero. So here's number five, 0.4p minus 0.6a, so that's 0.4p, then minus 0.6a, that should be less than or equal to 0. And last, uh, the non-negativity, everybody should be greater than or equal to 0. So that's it. So that is the entire linear programming model for this example.